friends welcome to my workplace at ranaghat west bengal india intra operative meiosis occurred in this case let us observe this surgery this is a hard cataract nuclear sclerosis is about grade 5 and initially the dilatation of the pupil is very good about 7 or 8 millimeter dilatation at this moment and i didn't expect any problem in this case but see what happens as the surgery goes the main incision and a side port on the left side of the main incision has been made tripe and blue dye has been applied underneath an air bubble and this is adrenaline to see if the pupil dilates little more but in this case the pupillary dilatation remained the same however whatever dilatation is there at present is okay but see what happens as i washed the dye out the pupil has started becoming small and this is after injection of visco the pupil has dilated again and the visco is 2% spmc and now i am going to do capsulorexis the patient is under topical anesthesia the surgery is being done just by proparacaine eye drops applied over the ocular surface no intra cameral anesthetic has been used and at this moment the capsulorexis is being done and it has been a very good adequate sized rexis and just after rexis the people has started constricting the size of the people at this moment is about 5 mm and as i touch the iris as i rotate and as the intraocular pressure decreases by a grace of fluid the pupil constricts so this is going to be a tough case the nucleus has rotated nicely after hydrodissection and now i'm going to introduce the tip of the fecal needle this is oatly cataract 3 and i'm going to employ my technique which i call submarine chop the exposed part of the fecal needle is this much and now i turn the hand piece make the bevel off push the nucleus little down bury the tip into the substance of the nucleus and at this moment the pupil has become quite small size of the pupil at this moment is about 4 mm but since i have a very good experience with this technique submarine chop i could divide the nucleus into two heminuclei and now i am going to divide this heminuclei into two halves it is done and now this fragment is quite large and i'm going to divide this fragment into two pieces and now i start emulsifying this three fragments i'm always at the iris plane and the tip of the fecal needle is always at the center of the pupil and this is the 
third piece of the hemineucleus. It is done. And now I rotate the other hemineucleus and bring it in front of the phaco teeth and chop it into two pieces. But these two pieces are not completely separate from each other. It is attached near the center. I am trying to get at the edge and tilt it, but it didn't happen. And now is the time to come out, inject some visco and manage this piece manually. Do some manual work so that the surgery becomes safe. Inject some visco, the people dilates. And now I take a Sinsky hook and my small chopper. Go behind the piece lift off and the pieces are separated completely and it is positioned in this way so that as I go inside the larger piece is in front of the phaconidal and one more thing happened the people remained dilated for some time for managing these two large pieces. See, the pupil has dilated. This is because of reverse pupillary block at this time. And this reverse pupillary block is helping me in keeping the pupil dilated and I didn't do anything to release the reverse pupillary block. And see how beautifully the last pieces are getting emulsified. So it is done and now as I come out see the people has become very small about 3 millimeter in size. Now inject visco and I am going to use a Simco cannula to remove the cortex. I can go behind the iris and catch hold of the cortical fibers and remove it with the Simco. See how beautifully the cortex is coming out. And now I go through the side port and only one side port has been made in this case. Go through the side port and remove some more cortex from the soft incisional area. And it is done. And now let us see if all the cortex has been removed or not. I am going to check that with an instrument which is shaped like the letter Y. So Visco is injected and now I take that instrument, retract the iris and check 360 degree. You can check if there is any cortex or any nuclear piece hidden under the iris or not. Go through the side port and check the rest of the area. So the cortex is nicely removed. There is no small nuclear piece under the iris and now we can implant the intraocular lens. I am going to use a B cartridge and I am going to enlarge the main wound little bit making the incision about 3 mm. And now 
implanting this intraocular lens from Johnson and Johnson this is sensor 1 this is a beautiful lens hydrophobic material and glistening doesn't occur in this lens the lens is dialed and the haptics are in the equator of the capsular bag and now is the time to remove visco and we have to do this job thoroughly first I'm using this 23G Simco irrigating the anterior chamber at this time it is double irrigation irrigation from the bottle and I'm using the aspirating port for irrigation by the syringe and um, at this time I am removing visco from the capsular bag since this instrument is thinner than a coaxial IA it is easier to go behind the eye well with this instrument now irrigation and aspiration has been used for some time and now I'm going to use the bimanual irrigation aspiration for some time. Since I have only one side port, the irrigation goes through the main wound and the anterior lip of the main wound is lifted gently so that leakage is restricted. And the aspirating probe presses on the lens and a lot of visco has been removed so we are towards the end of the surgery this is moxifloxacin and this is closure of the side port if we can manage a case without using iris hooks or any people expansion device the people remains normal there is no trauma to the sphincter there is no not much of pigment dispersion so these are the advantages if we can manage a case without using iris hooks or any people expansion device the antechamber has been nicely formed now the wounds are checked there should not be any leakage from any wound few drops of moxie is applied over the ocular surface and the case is concluded thank you very much for your attention hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills you can manage intraoperative meiosis either in this way or using iris hooks or any people expansion device don't hesitate to use iris hooks or people expansion device if your intuition says that you should use it thank you very much be a great surgeon and serve your patients with love respect empathy and great surgical competence